Hello garden friends. Um, I've been asked how I support my flowers that tend to start to flop over. And I use something that's very inexpensive uh, because I'm a budget gardener. And it's um, cement or concrete remesh panels. And I use bolt cutters and I cut them to size that I need. Like this um, cone flower that's being visited by lots of bees um, is starting to lean, but it's not that tall, so I don't want to swamp it. So this piece, you can see here of remesh, I have cut two, one, two, three squares. I've left some spikes on the end. It's cut flush on the top, and I just, and the width, I let them see, one, two, three, four, five, and a piece, um, some of the spikes are still there and I just stick it up under and I could support also that daisy over there and I just stick it in the ground and because of its rustiness and its uh, color it does tend to just blend in to the environment it doesn't stand out as something stark that you can really see once especially everything starts filling in even more of these more of these will come up but you see how it puts it straight up you're not tying individual flowers up to stakes etc and i'll show you another spot that i have some and unless you really really look for them you can't see them now the remesh panels they used to be four by eight sheets and i was pricing them and they were like seven or seven dollars seven or eight dollars um, at like your big box stores or um, like we also have Ace Hardware that carries them. And I was pricing them this last week. Number one, they're a different material and they only come, uh, they're 42 inches wide by seven feet. And now they're like between 14 and $16. So everything has jumped in cost. But since I use portions, I mean, they go far and it's still cheaper than buying expensive supports um, that you find available. And since you really don't see them, um, I don't see the reason to buy more expensive. And they're very sturdy. I've used these for years and years, probably 15 years, um, and they're still going strong. I don't have to replace them. I love the rustiness of this. I don't know if these new ones will rust this new material, but I'm going to give it a try. My husband's going to buy some today, which reminds me I have to text him and remind him to pick some up. He will forget unless I do that. So let me take you to show you some more in the garden and how they look and just kind of blend in. Now, can you see that one at the base of these daisies? It's really almost invisible until you get up closer and see it there. Um, and you can cut them to size. I can get, if I need it taller, I can cut it taller. Um, I don't, I don't see, this one is not as tall as the other one. Let me look, yeah, it's not as tall. So depending on your plant and the one you want to support, and even though this daisy is pretty tall, taller than the uh, echinacea I was supporting with the other one, it all works. Now this one, this echinacea, needs some support. So I'm going to have to go find another one and put it down in there to help get make it stand up straight. Now my plants do this because the sun comes from behind me and um, goes down over there. So that everything reaches for the sun. And that's why they do this and need that support. And I should have supported my little Aglaia daisy better than I did. And I'm going to work on that too. So that is how I use what many people make tomato cages out of, and I'll show you, is the remesh. Um, they work beautiful for tomatoes. Another thing I love about these panels um, as tomato cages is the deer can't get to the tomatoes. And don't eat them. Um, and that reminds me, i got to get some deer repellent because they've been eating my paniculata hydrangeas. Oh, I was so devastated. But anyways, so there are the supports.
I wanted you to just, I just wanted you to see this one. If you want to gussy them up for whatever reason, this one I just spray painted white. Um, and it's as a cage. If I wanted to use it as a different support, I could open this up and cut it to size and that will work. Like I said, I use bolt cutters to cut the wire. And I really don't think I need to show you that. It's pretty simple. Um, and then shape it to how I like. Maybe I will show you just because a lot of people like to see it done. When I get my new panels, I'll do that. So here is my piece of concrete remesh and I'm going to cut it into plant supports. Now I want some of this, a piece like a prong sticking out so it will stick into the ground and I don't need the whole length unless I guess it was a long bed and like I, well I did use the in my tomatoes, um, a, a, no, it wasn't a full length but it was a long piece but I don't necessarily want this. I want to put it into a garden bed that needs just a little support and it's easier to handle when it's a certain length. So I'm thinking I want these to be, well, this one's for taller ones. So I'm gonna cut it all the way down here. Now this won't be wasted. I could use it for something else and um, it'll, everything will be fine. So I'm gonna cut right at the tip of this and then this will be the prong that sticks this will be the prong that sticks into the ground, and then this will be how tall it will be because it'll stick in the ground pretty far, but it'll be a perfect size for a plant support. And then I may cut it in half lengthwise, but this takes bolt cutters because a uh, wire cutters will not do this job. And you just go along and cut each one. And I'll cut this one too. I might hold, let it hold together with the ends and then I'll finish off. So. Okay, here goes the final end. And then this end. Okay, so there you see how I have a prong there. And then I'm gonna maybe cut it right in half. Let's see, one half will have a side piece and the other half will have a prong that you can use to make a circle and you can use the prong to wrap around the other edge to hold it. So I'm thinking I wanna go, huh, hopefully that's not fire engines. I think I'll go right to here. And you see how it has prongs, which you can, they will be buried in the garden and or you can create a circle with it. It would be a tight circle, but you could take a circle and then this would wrap around here to hold it in place. But I don't need those. I got plenty of circles. So, whoops, sorry. So that is how you cut it to make your plant support. So let me get the other one. Let's show you how small that one is compared. And so you have can make different sizes. Now I could have cut this off over on this side and then it would have been a bit a little bit longer, but this will work perfectly. Let's take this out to the garden. Let's take this piece out to the garden and we'll place it. I may cut this off so I don't scratch myself. Cut it off more level, flush with the top. All good, let's go. So here is where I am gonna put my support. Now let me get over here. These lilies I had to dig up. I showed it, I did an Instagram stories. It's on my Facebook too. 
of how I had to dig these out of a pot that was not draining. They were drowning. I did not think they would make it, and so far they have, and they're even going to continue to bloom, I think. So um, we'll wait and see, because it looks like the blooms are coming on. But here's my support. I'm just going to put this one straight across. There's nothing down there I could really harm, but this will help for these because I can tie them up to it. And the length makes it nice because I can do several right along here. And it does kind of fade away once you get the foliage up against it. And I can uh, sprinkle some seeds of a low growing annual in front or put a ground cover and that would be pretty or just the mulch, the, um, the compost mulch is fine too. But let me go get the wire. I thought I had seen, oh, here it is, piece of wire. I use this, this is coated wire. I don't know what it was for, but, and I just support by looping around that the flower. I need to pull that out. It's not doing any good. But I will go get some more and I will tie up the rest of these and then I'll show you the finished product. And there we have our lilies supported by this remesh panel. And you would be surprised at how that just blends in with everything. Um, you'd think it would just stand out. This will rust so it, it gets this rusty patina, which I love rust in the garden and metal. You know, I have galvanized tubs and etc. in the garden, but I had not planned on the lilies being planted here. I, um, let me get down here to talk to you. It's very hot today, but I hadn't planned on the lilies being here. Uh, as I said, they were in a pot, it got clogged. We were leaving on vacation and I had to hurry up and save them. So I just threw them in the first available spot here in the garden. Um, but I think I'll like them here because the delphinium is done back there and I have some Cleome. Hopefully it'll come up um, tall enough and bloom this year before the season's over. But um, this was really kind of a bare spot and I think the lilies will do pretty here. And if they keep on going, I've been shocked because when I dug them up, I didn't get all of the bulb. Now there was some roots right along the stem a little bit and I thought, well, there was a chance. So I'll go ahead and plant them. And so far, so good. So you never know. It doesn't hurt to try things like that when uh, mishaps happen. So there's so many things you can do with concrete remesh and it's relatively inexpensive. It's gotten more expensive this year than it was in past years. It's kind of doubled in price, but comparatively um, as easy it is to work with and the many things you can use it for, it's still relatively inexpensive. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you will join me next time when we do something else in the garden.